What's up, you guys? Welcome back. We are doing a very, very chatty get ready with me video. This has been like my go to everyday look, which is wild because it's a little bit more smoky for me. And this has just been like my go to because I have just been wanting to do a little bit more of a smoky look than normal. I'm ready to bring back some 2016 vibes in an updated way. Side note, let me know if you want like a whole video on that because that would be really fun. But I did a Q&A. I had you guys ask me questions on Instagram. So I go through all of those today and just answer things and update you on life, health, wellness, fitness, relationships, babies, makeup, like everything. So it gets, it gets very chatty today. <laughs> and I show you this uh, makeup look that you've seen me do a million times. So that is it. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe and let's do our makeup. I am so ready to bring this natural through my hair. I feel like I've been blonde for so long and it will still be blonde whenever I bring my natural through, but I feel like this blonde is just, it's taking away, you know? I just think that this color up here is just a whole vibe and I am ready for it. I feel like this look has been really like just boosting my winter mood. It's been making me feel a little bit more put together. Let me get my little clips in we can get started. So first and foremost, I've been using the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I've been really loving this. I think that it works so nicely with my skin. I think it feels really nice and it works really, really well. I honestly like, when you find products like this at the drugstore, it's hard to buy bougier stuff because this is just as good as like a good high-end primer. I use the Pat McGrath foundation. I just can't get away from this. I love it so much. Anytime I stray away from this, I end up coming back and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, yeah, I know because it's your favorite freaking foundation. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics number no. seven brush. I'm just going to pump this on the back here and then apply it on the skin. So I have been, especially this week, I've been in such a makeup mood. So let me know what types of makeup videos you want. I feel like you haven't heard that from me in a long time, but I've just been in such a makeup mood. I got a few requests to do like the mob wife trend, totally down to do that. You guys want like a Valentine's Day look, totally down for that. But yeah, if there's anything specific or even like the style, I feel like, I've gotten to a place now with my content where I have a lot of variety. At least it feels like that for me where I feel comfortable to do a tutorial, but I feel just as comfortable to do a vlog. You know, everything just seems very like balanced and even. Like I, I feel like it doesn't feel like I'm too far in one end. You know what I mean? So yeah, it just feels really good. And I've just been in kind of like a more makeup-y mood this week. So I want to do some makeup-y stuff. So let me know what you want to see. I was kind of thinking of doing like some 2016 inspired makeup. Apparently the clean girl aesthetic is out. I mean, will it ever be out? No, because that just basically is like no makeup. I've like this year, ever since the start of January, I've been really trying to do my makeup more, even if it's like a quick look before the gym. And it has made me feel just so prepared for the day. There's something about starting my day with putting on just a little bit of makeup, even if I'm going to the gym, because it just makes me feel like afterwards, I feel more put together. And some people are like, why would you do that? Like, you're gonna sweat it off. I don't like sweat insanely much at the gym, to be honest. I do if I'm doing like intense cardio, but I'm only doing that like, once or twice a week. So I'm not gonna wear makeup for that. And even if I did, it's not gonna wipe it off. Like the makeup stays. Yeah, I don't really care. So you do you. If you wanna do makeup for the gym, do it. I usually don't. I would say this is the first length of time where I've done it for multiple days in a week and it just makes me feel so good. I feel a little bit more confident. I feel like I work out better. I don't know. I just, I feel, I feel good. And then afterwards, it's like, do, if I need to go to the grocery store, I feel cute, you know? So don't let anybody make you feel weird for making for wearing makeup to the gym. The other thing is, there's a lot of people that like go to the gym before they have to go to work or come to the gym right after work. And if you're judging people because they wear makeup to the gym, that says more about you than it does about them. I've got the foundation on. It's just so beautiful. Such a beautiful foundation. I'm in LM9. That's my shade in case you're curious. For my concealer, I've been obsessed with this. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Radiant Concealer in light medium. And I've been loving this specifically because it's full coverage like shape tape, but it's not so matte and it just, it's not too like luminous either. It's just gorgeous. 
So I do a little triangle here, a dot, a dot. You don't need to go crazy because it's so full coverage. And I've been loving my beauty blender. You just blend that in underneath the eyes. I just feel like it looks so pretty. And then I'll go over my lids too. I've been using this as an eye primer. I know I haven't been using Painterly from MAC which is wild. I mean, I still love that, obviously, it's amazing, but I think especially from like doing my makeup more frequently, it's nice to not have to pull out another product, and this works great as long as I powder it. I also feel like there's just certain things that I've recently changed up in my routine, mainly because of age. <laughs> like, I feel like the way that I started doing makeup recently has changed with different things on my face changing, so maybe I could also do like makeup over 30 video or something. I don't know because things are different. Still haven't had any Botox or anything. Um, however, that might change this year. Things might change this year. We'll see. I'm kind of playing it by ear. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of powder. I either use the Laura Mercier powder or the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Sometimes I mix them together. It kind of just depends. So I'm gonna mix them together today, but that's kind of like a just a personal preference, I think. And then I'm gonna dive into these questions. The first one that I got is, is Ruben gone often or does he hide when you film? He never hides when I film. I just don't film when he's around, honestly. I don't know, it just like doesn't make sense for him to be like in my content. You know what I mean? I'm not filming like, here's my husband, this is what he does. Someone asked me about him cleaning and they're like, why doesn't he clean? Do you really, like, do you really think that I'm gonna film him cleaning? Think about that for a second. Like, really think about that. That makes absolutely no sense. So, I don't know. I think sometimes people just, like, look at social media and think that is 100% of life. If that's the way you think about social media, you should really reevaluate that because you only see, like, a fraction of someone's life. So like right now he's at work, so I'm filming. He has a job, so I f have a job and I film during the day when he's not here. The other thing too, he is not a YouTuber. He's not on social media. And the times that he has been in vlogs and stuff, like I just posted a, a vlog of us shopping, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I film this? And usually he's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, whatever. But it, it's just very rare that I'm like, let me film with my husband because the time that I spend with him is like my quality alone time and I'm not gonna like film it for the internet. You know what I mean? I think too, it gets a little confusing because so many people just broadcast their life and broadcast their relationships on the internet. I'm just never gonna be that person. Um, sharing things here and there, yeah, that makes sense, but it's gonna be casual and it's not gonna be a lot because I don't want to make my relationship part of my business. You know what I mean? The, and some people do that, that's fine. That's just not what I wanna do. So, but I think it gets confusing for people because that's what they see other people doing and then they just assume that if somebody isn't showing their spouse or their significant other on the internet, I don't know, it's like, do you think that they just like don't have a life outside of it? You know what I mean? So yeah, I just think that those are funny, but if you like actually really think, like the people that are asking those kinds of questions, Really think about it because it's a very silly question when you start asking things like that. Anyway, I'm gonna use the Hourglass Diffused Bronze Light Bronzer. I love this. Next question, what YouTubers do you watch? Let me go through my subscriptions because that is a good question and I'm horrible with names or like remembering things off the top of my head. I've been actually subscribing to a lot of video podcasts or podcasts that I would listen to that now are on video. I recently subscribed to Morgan Green. I watched her 75 Hard YouTube video and that kind of got me motivated and excited about 75 hard, which I'll give you a little update on that. Um, we had a week of negative 10 to negative 15 degree weather here. So I stayed my ass inside. <laughs> I did not, so I didn't do the 75 hard because it was like, to me, that's not worth the risk. I'm good not, you know, doing 75 hard for that week. So I do have to start the 75 hard over. We now have like what looks like a good like two weeks of 30 to 40 degree weather. So um, now is the time to start it again. I just haven't. Um, but I did start up my lifting routine at the gym again. And that, that has been amazing. I have been lifting for years, but on and off, I feel like 
I, I have to have a consistent schedule, but I have to be flexible and switch it up at the same time. There needs to be like an even balance of both because otherwise it just feels very monotonous and boring. So I have to keep it fun, but I can't switch it up too much because I need structure at the same time. So I have found a sweet spot with that. June or July, I stopped lifting and started doing like group classes, which love group classes and everything. But finally I was like, okay, I'm not really getting much out of these. I mean, they're good. It's not that I'm not getting much, but I'm not getting results from it. It's basically there for me to move my body and that's about it. So I started doing my lifting routine, which I've been loving. Um, I've been doing a split, so upper body and lower body split. But I found something similar. Hey Google, stop listening. That freaked me out. So I'll do upper body and lower body on different days and stuff. Um, I prefer that because I don't really enjoy full body days because when I do full body days, it gives me more of an excuse to not go to the gym because I'd be like, I already did. I already hit that muscle group yesterday. It's okay if I take today off and then so on and so forth. So if I miss a day, I miss a whole muscle group. So it makes me go. That has been something that I realized that I really like. So that's what I'm doing. Loving it again. I feel like just having a strategic plan and like something to work on has felt really good and really refreshing. But um, yeah, I haven't started the 75 hard back up again since we had that crazy weather there for a while. It was so cold. So with that, like I also just like stopped the reading because the reading, I just don't like having to read every day like a physical book. If audiobooks counted, I mean, that's so easy for me. Like I do that all day, every day. And some people were like, well, maybe you should do 75 soft. I feel like 75 soft is how I live my life. That is my everyday for me. So that wouldn't be a challenge. Um, like I'm already walking every day outside. I'm doing my workout every day, you know, like, all of that's already happening. I eat super healthy. I don't drink. That was another question is how often do I drink? It's so seldom that I don't even have a number for you. It's it's just never been a part of my life, to be honest. Drinking has just never been something I was into. It's so seldom, it's hard to, to even say a number. Maybe once a year, maybe three times a year. Maybe I'll go a year without doing it. You know, I don't know. I've never seen the appeal. I just don't really get it, to be honest. I don't think that anything really tastes very good. And then when I say think, oh shit. When I say, oh, I don't really like the way that it tastes, people assume that I want something sweet. I don't want something sweet. I think that tastes disgusting. It's too, I used to like it, but it's too sweet now for me. I don't know. So like there are certain wines that I like, but like I'm just like a water and coffee kind of person. So I don't know. So it's just, it's just not very frequent. Okay. So back to people that I follow on YouTube. I like Carrie Rad, Makeup by Tiffany D, Sarah's Day, Jamie Genevieve, Robbie D. Christie. Okay. Those are just the few that like popped up in my feed just now. Do you ever wish that you weren't on social media? Love following you. Thank you. Um, Yes and no. Last year, yes, I literally almost quit my job last year. Um, yes, but I think that when I feel that way, I have to do a check-in with myself and my mindset because that's what it usually comes down to. So normally I'm fine, but like last year, the last two years were not good and I had a lot of like self-reflection that I was doing. Um, just a lot of transformation happening within myself and last summer specifically was really weird for me like I just felt weird and I couldn't even put my finger on it it was just I was overly stimulated with the internet and so I like completely stopped consuming I kept posting but I stopped consuming because that's where it just got so overwhelming and to be honest that was probably one of the best decisions I've made was just like not going on my phone and just posting and posting what I wanted to post, how I wanted to post it, not seeing what other people were doing. It was really refreshing because it took just that whole part out of it. And I think that you can't create if you're always consuming and it's hard to not consume because these apps are quite literally designed to make you addicted to it. I went into a whole deep dive on like understanding dopamine and how that affects your brain and how social media and dopamine are intertwined and just like the whole thing. So I, I went down that whole rabbit hole, which ended up being like very 
good for me because now, like honestly for years, I always hated TikTok because I just felt like, I don't know, like I'm just old school. Here I am doing like a freaking YouTube makeup video, you know? So it was almost like you can't teach an old dog new tricks kind of thing. Like, and they say with social media, you need to pivot, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to pivot. I didn't want to go on there. And so, and I think it's very easy as like a viewer to be like, well, then don't stay here. But it's hard when like, it's how you make a living. So you have to pivot with the trends and stuff so that you can stay relevant and make money, honestly. So I struggled with that a lot last summer because I was just like, how do I fit in here? How, what, I don't know. I was just very confused. Long story long. Um, I feel better now. And to be honest, when I was thinking about it, I don't even know really what exactly changed my mindset. I just, all I can think of is having that time off of social media for consuming, like just not consuming it for a solid month really helped to start a reset for me. I don't know, like now it's so weird because like I love going on TikTok for fun, but I don't get stuck on it like I used to. I could use it and then get off of it. So not anymore to answer your question. I don't feel like that anymore. I enjoy what I'm doing. I feel like I have a purpose. I, cause that was the other thing. I just felt like I didn't have a purpose. I feel like I have a purpose now. That was the longest answer to your question. Oh, and the other thing too with social media, I feel like for a long time I was attracting people that weren't like me. I don't know. I feel like when I was doing makeup videos for so long, the only thing that we had in common was makeup. Now for the last couple of years that I have broadened my content and shared more things about me, my thoughts, my lifestyle, whatever, I feel like I'm attracting more of an audience that not only likes the makeup, but also is more like me in those other ways. And I think I'm filtering out the people that, that aren't our vibe. You know what I mean? And like one of the quotes that I love is, uh, you are not for everyone. And I think for so long, I wanted everyone to feel welcome. I think that's more of what it is. I wanted everyone to feel welcome. And while everyone is welcome, the people that aren't are the assholes. <laughs> and so I think that I'm like weeding out the assholes that don't um, vibe with us. And now it just, it really does feel like a closer knit community than it used to. And I'm loving that. I think that's part of it. I think I think that's part of like what's happened the last couple of years. It's, it's shifting into more of like this close knit group where we have more in common. Next question, any advice for how to get out of a depressive episode? Depression is hitting me hard. I'm so sorry that it's hitting you hard right now. That is not fun. I think, First and foremost, one thing that helps me when I'm feeling down is just to know that it's temporary, even though it feels like it's gonna be forever. I hate to say like the most basic bitch advice, but it really is helpful is to get outside, make sure you're eating healthy and drinking your water. Like I know you don't wanna hear that because when I'm in those moods, I'm like, fuck you, I don't wanna hear that. I want junk food and I wanna watch TV um, or do nothing. So. Yeah, that's like the most annoying advice, but it really is true. Anytime I get in those funks, actually before all that, let me start with get off social media. That That is always what helps. Honestly, if I do two days solid with no social media, I feel like a brand new person. I'm like, I don't care what anybody else is doing. Let me live my life. It almost feels like you're in pause when you're watching other people um, because you literally are. You're literally pausing your life to see what other people are doing. So that would be number one. Get off your phone for like a week, honestly. put You can put your phone on grayscale if it helps. That helps it not be as interesting. That's something that I did when I took my social media break. Um, and if you wanna know how to do that, you could just Google it, how to make my phone grayscale. I don't make everything gray, which makes it less interesting to watch, read a book, do anything else to get you off of social media and then do all of the healthy type things because that is what's going to really help your mindset. Getting outside, getting the vitamin D. I want to do a whole episode actually on like how to romanticize winter because this winter I have done things a little bit differently. The winter blues have only hit me like two days so far. Yes, vitamin D is a huge part of it. I would always supplement, but this year I have been outside more than any other winter and I can't help but think that that's part of it is like getting the actual vitamin d from the sun that would be my advice I also have a podcast episode all on it on my podcast it's now called in her skin um but if you go back I think it was over the summer I did an episode called like how to get out of a rut and stuff 
I think you'd really like it. What is your favorite TV show at the moment? Ruben and I restarted watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's been really fun. We're now at the later seasons where it's just not as funny anymore, but that's been fun. I like I like rewatching a lot of the same stuff. We just watched the documentary, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. That was a wild ride, a wild, wild ride. If you're into like documentary slash true crime type stuff, give it a watch. Honestly, I feel like I haven't been watching a ton of TV. We watched um, The Society of the Snow on Netflix. It was a movie that was excellent. I had no idea that that had even happened. <laughs> That was absolutely wild. What are you most looking forward to this year? You know, I don't really have any plans. <laughs> um, I think just like doing what I'm doing now. Just, I'm excited to like move further on my fitness journey. And I'm like honestly really focusing on that. I feel like I focused so much on my mental health the last two years and I feel like I'm in a really good spot and just kind of continuing with the things that I've learned and implemented in my life. So it's so hard to do my brows and talk at the same time. Um, my birthday is the day after Christmas and this year especially it sucked because I was sick. But even when I'm not sick, it sucks because first off, most of everybody is busy on the 26th because they're doing stuff with their family so no one can ever really hang out. And then if it's like a week later when we hang out, then it's like New Year's and it's just a whole thing. Also, even if people could hang out, by the time my birthday rolls around, I am so overly stimulated from like doing stuff with everybody within my family that I'm like, I don't want to see anybody <laughs> right now because I'm just over it. You know what I mean? So anyway, my birthday sucks every year. And this year, especially it sucked because we were sick. So we didn't even do Christmas this year. We did, we did nothing. And so I was just like, in such a bad mood on my birthday, whatever. I decided that this year I'm gonna have myself a little girl's birthday party in June at my half birthday. So I never wanted to do that before because I felt like it was, it just seems a little narcissistic, but I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do it this year because I've never had like a birthday party as an adult. I've never had one. So I'm gonna do it. And I am excited for that. So I am, not that I'm planning it already, like I'm not getting crazy, but I made a little Pinterest board to get me excited because just I've just never done that before. And I can't wait. And I wanna dress up for it, get balloons and do all that. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I do my makeup in here, it just does not turn out as good as it does in my bathroom. Also, I have been on such a silver kick. So I did my color analysis, but I didn't do it professionally. This is like my version of color analysis. I found, I'll put their um, information down below in the description box. It's the Color Analysis Studio on YouTube. One of my favorite, oh, that's a YouTube channel I've been watching. I'm obsessed with their content. I think I have watched almost every single one of their videos because it's so fascinating to me. As somebody who, I used to be a professional makeup artist where I would be active on like weddings and photo shoots and things like that but I've been out of the game for years now, but I can look at someone and be like, oh, I can tell that you have an olive skin tone. I can tell you have like more yellow or more red or whatever. This broke it down in a way that I think everyone can easily understand. They are so good at what they do. Um, I believe they're Italian living in Australia and they have the, they're such beautiful people with beautiful personalities and I just love their videos. So they they have so many different types of people on their page and they go in depth into the color analysis. So anyway, I used that to figure out my color analysis, but I still should get it done like professionally. Like I would love to have them do it for me online, um, but I do think that they are booked. I am probably either a cool summer or a cool winter. I prefer the colors in Cool Winter. I think it makes my features pop. What makes me think I'm not a cool winter is that it's known that like most blondes are not a cool, are not in the winter category. I'm guessing that I'm most likely a cool summer, but I, I think I look better with the Cool Winter palette. I think it makes my features pop more. Anyway, someone requested I do like a color analysis makeup tutorial. I need to do more research on that because for me, I mean, that makes sense for cool tones. I love cool tones, but I have blue eyes and orange makes blue eyes pop. 
orange is very warm and yellow undertoned. So I love putting straight up orange on my eyes. That wouldn't match with my cool toned that I've got going on. But then I got to thinking, is that why anytime I do a cool toned look, I love adding in some orange to make it warm. I'm always mixing in warm and cools together because I think they look so good together. Is it because I've got blue eyes? I don't know. So I need to research that more, but um, yeah, I will link their uh, page down below because it was just so helpful in figuring out my, what I'm, at least what I think my color analysis is. By the way, I realize I'm not really telling you what I'm using. I will link everything down below. So I've been doing a very smoky look. Let me, very smoky makeup for me as of recently. This is probably a very neutral, natural look for other people and for past me years back. But um, now this is a very dramatic look. But you know what? This look has just been making my eyes pop. It's nothing new. You've seen it a million times. But uh, I've just been loving it. And I'm using the Man Eater palette from Tarte, the original. What else is new? Moving on to the next question. Are you close with any of the other beauty influencers? I love you and you're so genuine. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm I'm acquaintances with people. I'm, I'm close with Kelsey, Kelsey Christine on Instagram, but she is more in like the fashion category. But I think in general, I'm friendly and like there's some people that I message with, but I wouldn't say that we're close. Have you tried the Maybelline Skin Tint? Let me see if that is what this is. Yes, I have. It is so good. The problem is they were like sold out of every single color. So I got this one anyways. I think I'm probably shade 120. I got shade 129. And it is so, so dark on me. It looks good once I've blended it out. But like if I put it on my face right now, like instead of the other foundation, it, it would be like, whoa, like that's that's too dark. So if I have on a spray tan, I can make it work. It is glorious and I'm waiting for like my local Target or Ulta to stock it in my shade because it is gorgeous. So yes, this is awesome. Am I trying the new Kim Kardashian eyeshadow palette? I don't know. I'm curious about like the change, like the formula change in the lip liners. It's mainly the lip liners that I'm interested in, not even the palette, not even the lipsticks, because I'm obsessed with the one um, lipstick that she had before, the nude 1.5 but the price change is like double the price now. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I was excited when I first saw it. So many of you guys messaged me about it. And now I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I do want to see it in person. So I hope that she like, is she an Ulta? I don't know. I'd like to be able to like swatch it um, rather than buy online. So we'll see. What is your gym playlist? How often do you change it up? This is going to be um, not controversial, but... You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I don't listen to music when I work out, usually. Sometimes I do, usually I don't. Um, I listen to podcasts <laughs> while I work out. I usually listen to Mind Pump while I work out. Blonde Files, The Skinny Confidential, Him and Her Show. I like The Pursuit of Wellness. I like With Wit. Kristen Cavallari's new podcast, which it's funny because Kristen's podcast is like all about like dating and I'm not dating, but I'm just interested in what she's talking about. It's just so fascinating. But yeah, I don't know. I, I like to just listen to podcasts because I feel like I'm then distracted where when I listen, oh, whoa, I went way too smoky over there. Shit. Um, when I listen to music, I don't want to say I focus too hard because it is good to focus when you're lifting, but I don't know. I, I really enjoy podcasts. I do put on, this is such a weird routine, but this is what I do. At the end of my workout, when I do my leg raises, I always put on Money by Cardi B. It goes with the song and then I'm done by a certain time. I think I'm done by like a minute and between a minute and 30 and a minute and 50. It gets me focused and in the mood and like we're doing our leg raises now. So I've done that for a couple of years. I know that's like a weird little routine, but yeah, that's what I listen to music on. Um, and then sometimes I will listen to music. And if I do, it's usually throwback early 2000s hip hop. What book are you reading? I'm actually reading nothing right now. I'm listening to some audiobooks, like some like self-development stuff. Currently like re-listening to The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wiest. And I wanna start up The Power of One More Again by Ed Milet, one of my favorites. Someone asked if I smoke cigarettes. No, I've never smoked a cigarette my whole life. Ruben smokes. Sometimes maybe you'll see like either 
pack of cigarettes in my videos or Nicorette gum. But no, I've never had a cigarette. I'm glad I never got into that just because I like not having to rely on that. Like right now, the main thing that I rely on is like my coffee. <laughs> do you like to cook? If so, how often do you prepare meals homemade? I try to prepare every meal homemade. That's honestly when I feel my best. I notice that like I start feeling like shit when I'm eating out or like getting food in more often. Um, but I do enjoy cooking, which is funny because I didn't know how to cook for the longest time and I hated it and it gave me, like I just got like really anxious doing it. Um, but now I love it. I eat a lot of the same stuff. I have a food page on Instagram that I recently started posting on again. It's called Burrito Vor because I eat a very like heavy meat based keto-ish way. Yeah, if you want some like food inspo or if you're curious on like the way that I eat, um, I have a bunch of meals over there that I post. Of course, there's like a million questions about kids. Do I want them? How many? I literally say this in every video because everybody asks in every video. Um, not anytime soon, one day, and I don't know how many because I figure whenever we start with one, we'll just We'll see how that goes and then uh, go from there. Someone asked if I have hair extensions. No, you know, I was so excited to say no. Um, I haven't had hair extensions for a year now. I have been without the hair extensions and I feel amazing. I don't think I'll ever go back to hair extensions. And I was very excited to answer that one. I have a lot of questions about how to stay motivated to work out and eat healthier. I don't. <laughs> I don't stay motivated. Uh, motivation's very fleeting. So I guess when you are motivated, when you start to feel motivated, follow that feeling. And that's a good time to start implementing new um, habits, but start small and habit stack. So when you're doing something like, say you wanna drink more water, put your water by your coffee pot so that you drink your water before you have your coffee. You're stacking that with something that you already do. Stuff like that. So do that when you are motivated. So then you develop these habits and then when you become unmotivated, you rely on your discipline. It's all about being disciplined. Um, for so long, I actually will rewind even further. For so long, I was disciplined and I felt amazing. But then, the whole like self-love movement kind of got to my head. I'm not saying that's like a bad movement or anything like that, but a lot of like the verbiage that was going on in like on social media from that side of things was basically like, just listen to your body. Well, my body wanted fucking cereal and pizza. So I don't know. I think you can listen to your body, but you have to it's hard to listen to your body when you're not when you haven't been disciplined and when you've been just giving your body um, junk food and not moving your body. You can't really trust the voice in your head. You can't really trust your intuition because you haven't built that muscle up yet. So I would say, at least for me, relying on the discipline is more important than motivation because if you are only going to the gym when you're motivated, then you're never gonna go, neither am I. If I only did it when I was motivated, I would never go. Um, and there were times where I, that's how I based my workouts was on whether I was motivated or not. And then I wouldn't go and then I hated it. That's the thing is then I hated going because it was like, it was always a chore then because it felt like, well, I'm motivated, let me go. And then when I started not being motivated, it was like, oh, I don't wanna go. And then I wouldn't. And then I'd be down on myself for not going. Instead of just developing a healthy habit, a healthy routine of being disciplined to go to where it's not even a conversation. I'm not even down on myself because I never asked myself if I wanted to go in the first place. You just go and you just do it. And then afterwards, I just feel happy. I'm like, wow, I really did that. I feel good. That was a good workout. You know what I mean? So I think um, just the whole staying motivated thing is just irrelevant. Don't even think about motivation. Don't even have that conversation with yourself. The habits that you create and sticking to them and make them small, make it less than you think that you can do because then you can continue that when you're not feeling motivated. Next question, does Pretzel get along with other dogs and would you ever get her a sibling? So yes and no, She. it depends on the dog. Like when we're on our walks, I pretty much just keep her really close to me if there's another dog there. My 
in-laws have a dog that she gets along with, but also like she doesn't really like that dog either. So, which is funny because like when I see pretzels, she just looks like such a puppy. She just has a puppy look to her and she probably always will. But that dog is, it's like a beagle hound mix. And so she's a little bit bigger than pretzel and she's younger than pretzel. <laughs> You can just tell that Pretzel is older. So Pretzel's five and like you can see that she's not like a puppy puppy anymore when she's playing with that dog because she just gets over her and she like walks away and she's like, I'm done with you. So I mean, never say never. If we ever got another dog, it would have to be like in a divine way, like the way that we got Pretzel, like she literally just showed up on our doorstep. Um, and then there's more too. That's a long ass story, but, um, it would have to be something like that, but I don't think that we would actively go and find one. Cause I don't actually think that she wants a sibling. I think she likes being an only child dog. I really think she does. Yeah. Like based on like anytime she's hung out with Libby, my in-laws dog, like when she's alone with us, then she is just like, uh, like thriving being alone. She's just so happy. You can just tell. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think we'll get another dog. She's also, she is absolutely my soul animal or like my soul dog. Have you ever heard about that? Where it's like you, you literally, we connect on like a spiritual level. I just fear that if I got another dog, I'm just not going to like it as much as pretzel. So I just love her. She is like my actual child. So one of the number one questions I've been getting recently, it's probably the number one question I've been getting, is what's on my lips. And this has been like my favorite lip combo recently because it's kind of pinky, kind of warm, like a bold nude, but not like too overboard. I've just been loving it. So first and foremost is Nude Beige from NYX. You better believe I'm gonna mix like a bunch of stuff together. So I'm gonna line and overline my lips with this. Okay, so we've got a nice base. This is nice because it's like a cool to neutral toned nude for my skin tone. So next I go in and deepen it up a little bit. Let me sharpen this. This is Chai Lip Liner from Anastasia. I'm gonna go right along the edges. And this is kind of like a mauvier version of Cool Brown. You guys know I'm obsessed with Cool Brown. This is like, just like a, just a more mauve version. And now I'm blending it in. And then I feel like you can just top this with whatever nude you prefer, depending on like your skin undertone. I've been doing this look and using one of these three MAC lipsticks. So the main one is kind of sexy, which looks like this. That's the main one I've been using and that I'm gonna use today. Then there's Honey Love, which goes a little bit cooler and a little bit lighter. And then there's my Tweety, which is the warmest one, just kind of like a little bit more peachy. So um, I'm going to go in with Kinda Sexy. that's just kind of like a pinky peach. Lastly, but certainly not least, Morphe setting spray with my Patrick Ta fan. I love it. The lip is my favorite and the eyes. I've just been really loving a blown out smoky eye. And with this, you can do cool or warm, depending on whatever your heart desires. Let me zoom out really cool, like, other way. I have just been feeling very, almost like YouTube nostalgic. Like I've just been thinking about recently, there's a couple people that were always like my, not like my um, comfort creator. You know, we all have a comfort creator where like no matter what they post, I'm gonna watch it because it makes me feel cozy. There's a couple people that were like my go-to people that I would watch that would just inspire me. It wasn't even more of like a comfort feeling. It was more of like a, 
I'm intrigued, I'm inspired, I love what you're doing. And then it was almost like, I just, I swear, I blame everything on TikTok, but I just feel like with this oversaturation of people that we're seeing all the time on TikTok, those people that were that for me just became less interesting and I wasn't as like starstruck anymore. And now everyone's gotten into like casual content, which I have myself. All I wanna do is like vlog stuff, um, which is fine, I'm not, it's nothing against that, but, I saw Desi Perkins post something about like bringing back like, I don't think she even used the word curated content, but just like specialty content where like you try and you like put things together and you make it like a production. It gave me butterflies. And I was like, I miss that. I miss the production actually, which is so funny because for years you've been hearing me say, I want more casual, I want blah, 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 blah. And I'm not even gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna vlog tomorrow probably, but it's more of like, I think we had so much curated content for so long that we were craving something real. And now all we're seeing is real stuff that it's like, okay, I miss the, like there is beauty in real life and reality and, and whatever, and like real life situations and relatable content, but there's also beauty and stuff that can be curated. I miss curated Instagram fashion posts. That used to be, not videos, not try it on, whatever. No, I want stylized streetwear photo shoots. I miss that shit. Where I'm going with this is I have been, like that's why I came in here today because for like a month or two I've been filming in my bathroom. Love it and doing my makeup in there. I've loved it still. I literally just talked about how much I loved it. I love it. But it was like, you know, I kind of miss like, the studio thing, I don't know. It's just, I think, let me know what you're thinking. I don't know. I feel like this doesn't make any sense and I feel like I'm contradicting myself because in one, one video I'm like, oh, I love the casualness of my bathroom and now here I am like, I miss the like production. And I'm also sitting here on my vlog camera. Like if I did like a full tutorial, I'd do it on like my fancy camera, which is bigger and bulkier and more of a production. But I feel like the sparkle of social media has gone away. The sparkle of creators has gone away and I feel like part of it is because the content has just become so I don't know everyone is doing the same thing I guess is what I'm saying and it's not that one is bad or one is good it's that I feel like we just need that mix and we've gone so far in the other direction that it's like okay I am craving like I want somebody I want a Desi Perkins cut crease makeup tutorial you know what I mean? I want a, you know, I want a Desi Perkins Halloween makeup tutorial. And I, I'm not targeting her like she's not doing, it's not like a, a negative target towards her. It's like a positive, like I, that's what I watched and that's what I'm craving. Like I think, so after this, I'm meeting my mom for coffee and then I have to edit this video and film a favorites video. But after that, <laughs> after all of that, I wanna sit down tonight and watch some old school Desi Perkins YouTube videos. That is like the genre that I am missing. And part of it is that like, I'm just in a makeup -y mood this week. So here's like my question for you. Are you feeling the same way as me, number one? Number two, when it comes to my content, when I do a makeup video, do you like this setup here, this more casual? Do you like the production where it's like straight on whatever? One thing, when I would watch makeup tutorials back in the day when it was like the thing, you know, all the rage, whenever somebody did it on a like plain background, I didn't like that actually. I thought it was boring. It wasn't, I, I wanted to see inside your house. I wanted to see your background. I wanted to see what's behind that. What's in your bedroom? What's in your bathroom? Like people doing skincare videos in their gorgeous bathrooms. I was obsessed. I just think that's been lost. Like the, I think, was it the, the Vogue? Um, get on ready with me's from celebrities. I loved that. Or was it Harper? It was Harper's Bazaar. That's what it was. Um, and I don't know if they even still do that, but it's just, I'm craving that kind of content. So with mine, I'm curious, like if I were to film in here, like does, does that, is there, there's makeup all over my teeth. Does that even matter to you? Am I just talking out of my ass? Does that not even matter? Cause that could be a thing too. Maybe you just don't even care. Never thought of it before. Um, Cause like I know when I would watch stuff like back in the day when Jaclyn Hill would go on a flat background, I was like, ah, I want your house. Like your house is gorgeous. I want to see your house. And having that in the background was like, 
I just loved it. You know what I mean? So let me know your opinions on all that. Like, what are you thinking when, when it comes to like sit down videos? I think that's the other thing that I'm missing is sit down videos like this. I've been doing so many vlogs that it's funny because in a vlog, I'm talking to you in the moment when things happen and like whatever. And I'm just like showing you my life and like trying to like bring some entertainment and inspiration. But at the same time, there's something about a sit down video, whether it be a favorites video or a makeup tutorial or a get ready with me or whatever, a haul where I can actually talk. It feels like face to face. It feels like we're just having a conversation where when I'm vlogging, it's like, I'm go, go, go. I'm doing my life. I'm just showing you what I'm doing where this feels like a little bit more connecting. And I think I'm kind of missing that. And I'd like to bring some of this back a little bit and kind of have like, I just like the mix. I like that. I'm just reiterating that I like the balance. So anyway, I guess what, what's your opinion on opinion on all of it? Do you, are you feeling the same way that I'm feeling that like, I just miss that old school YouTube vibe and I'm gonna just start doing it again. Like I am down to do some old school stuff. I just, I'm ready to bring back some 2016 makeup. I'm ready to try some new things. I feel like I've been doing no makeup for a couple years. And like this right here is my step back into getting into a little bit more of that vibe, even though this is still not that vibe. This would be natural for 2016. Um, and I'm loving it because now this has been like what I'm like, I'm going to wear this to the gym after I get coffee with my mom. You know what I mean? And I'm excited. So anyway, that was so incredibly rambly. I hope it made sense. Just let me know your opinions. I'm just very curious. And that's it. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope, uh, that wasn't too rambly at the end, but even if it was, I just appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching this. If you end up doing this look, uh, let me know. Send me your pictures on Instagram and that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.